the reason you desire more money. Yeah. There is a reason you desire elevation. Some of these things are just within your spirit. Yeah. I came to prophesy to somebody. In some of the videos that we've covered, we have exposed or shown some of these people who have given off some truly heretical statements we have been told or have been charged with not playing the entire clip. For some reason, there are people who seem to want to defend heresy or heretics, people who give statements or biblical accounts that just aren't in the Bible. Some of you all have seen this little copyright disclaimer before. A copyright disclaimer is to say that we have the right under the use of, under the guise of fair use, to use certain portions of someone else's protected copyrighted material. And so what does that really mean? And here is also the response to those that would say, play the whole clip. They'll say, you need to play the entire clip. Don't just play parts of a clip so that you can fashion things the way you want it to seem. Now remember, first of all, the clips that we play, these are them in their own words. We're not fashioning them. We're not making them say these things. These are their clips. We try to play as much as we possibly can, but there's a limit to how much you can play. Why? Because of copyright laws. You cannot play someone's entire material, and you have to be careful about playing too much of someone's material. Why is that the case? Because there are many people out there, Joel Osteen, T.D. Jakes, Stephen Furtick, David Diga Hernandez, and so on and so on. People who will hit you with copyright, not claims, but copyright strikes. They will hit you with these strikes in an effort to get your channel removed. So for that reason, we cannot play all of the clips. But more to the point though, and more importantly, is why are there people who seem to want to defend a clear heretical statement? The devil spoke to me. <laughs> But I won't go into that experience. One day I will teach about this part and, and I'll go into great detail about this. God showed up or the angel of God showed up. It was six years old? Yes, the Lord Jesus showed up and he showed up with him. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so Jesus appeared to you and yes. then and an angel was with him. He had several angels with him, but the one that I walk with until now and there are many others that are with me, but the main one that is with me, I met him when I was six, when I, was, when I, uh, when I encountered the Lord. I was about six years old, mm -hmm. and the Lord Jesus appeared to me. I had footsteps like you'd hear, footsteps of a person. He sent me to this world to do an assignment that I should stay away from alcohol, mm. I should stay away from sin, that he was going to use me. This person would have you believe that one, he's a doctor, he's not. Two, that he is a prophet, he's also not. We've even given him or played him in his own words, giving prophecies that have not come true, which is a clear indication of a false prophet. And then someone will say, well, no, he's entitled to be wrong. He's a human. Human beings make mistakes, but prophets don't. But when he says he has spoken to the devil, he has been visited and spoken to Jesus, who came with angels, who took him to heaven, I'm not sure if he's also saying that he went to hell as well, but the fact of the matter is, if your antennas have not gone up, if you don't feel that this is bogus, well then it's not so really it's not so much on him as much as it is on you. By the way, I would like to ask him, since he has Jesus who came and visited him personally, who left an angel to be with him even up till now to guide him, to point him in the right direction. Where was the angel when one you started the band? that played and did music that obviously was not godly music, two, married this woman, why did the angel not tell you to not marry the woman, and two, even more importantly, tell you to divorce her. Cause I give me by my Cause your hair is pretty, you smell so sweet, the way you move your body make a bad man sing. I do understand that people do do things that are not Christ-like along the way, get married, some people have had divorce and so forth. I'm not on them because I'm pretty sure they didn't have angels to guide them. You say you did. You don't have to play the part of the fool. You don't have to play the part of the one who has the wolves pulled over their eyes. As a matter of fact, what you don't want to do is to be the one who's actually pulling the wolves over your own eyes. Paul did say the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but because they have these itching ears, they want to hear what they want to hear. That might be you. And if that is you, then you want to go to people 
to have them to say what you want them to say because it makes you feel good. Before Paul makes that statement, he says, preach the word, be ready in season, not of season. This is 2 Timothy chapter 4. And he says, reprove, rebuke, exhort. Unfortunately, though, if someone is doing just what Paul says in the Bible, reprove, reprove their doctrine, their statement, show it to be false. If someone is to rebuke them because they don't want to leave that errant doctrine or this false teaching, or if we want to do so constantly because Paul says to do it with all long suffering, exhorting them to, to really come around to sound doctrine. If someone were to follow the clear teachings of the Bible, well, then that person is wrong because they happen to have spoken against someone who you might idolize or who might be preaching something that you want to hear. It's not so much shame on them. Yes, shame on them and God will deal with them, but also shame on you for wanting to defend them. When you come back and say that you have seen this man, that you understand this man, that he's a godly man and you ought to play him in his own clips, also saying that you ought to go and visit him. First of all, I have been to these sort of events. This isn't anything new. Before he got to America, before he was born, I was frequenting these places. I thought this was the norm. And so it's disingenuous for you to think that no one who critiques these things, that they've ever been around these things. By the way, you don't have to frequent a, a crack house to know that drugs are bad. You don't have to go to prison to know that's not a good place to be. So do I have to, even if I hadn't gone, do I have to go to one of these places to realize, to come to the conclusion that what he's doing, what he's saying is false? No. And do I have to play the whole clip? I don't have to play the whole clip if I play enough and you hear him in his own words saying things like this. Yeah. This is the book of the generations of Adam in the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him. <laughs> Verse 2. Male and female created he them and blessed them. Can we read the whole line at the end? And called their name Adam. So Adam is created, but God is talking to two people. So he's saying that God is talking to two people when he's creating Adam. That's not true. But look, at, but look what else he's saying. God has created a problem within Adam because Adam is already pregnant with Eve. Now we're giving him in his context and he's stating that Adam is pregnant with Eve. Men don't get pregnant. I understand he's trying to use some sort of metaphorical language that he's trying to make a point. He's trying to gin up people who have itching ears because you can hear the people in the background clapping and cheering. They don't even know where he's going. They just want to hear something good. I just want my ears to be tickled. It's almost like going to a comedy show and you're laughing even before the joke or the punchline of the joke is given. But Adam is not aware. When God is naming him, he's not saying, I have given you somebody. God said, we must discover that there is an Eve inside of him. I will not tell him. And even before we go further, we already know the answer to the question or the statement. Adam was not pregnant with Eve. As a matter of fact, Eve had not been created. God took a portion of Adam, took his rib, and from that, God formed Eve. Adam didn't have to know or figure out that Eve was inside of him and that he had to figure this out and birth her. So God forms man and says, your name is Adam. But Adam did not hear the part of be fruitful and multiply. He didn't hear that part. Now, Adam didn't hear the part of be fruitful and multiply. Is that because he's playing off of another false prophet, another apostle by the name of Matthew Stevenson, who says that when God spoke to Adam, he said what he told Adam to do to a person who didn't have a body. Seven. Now, keep this verse in mind. Let's reflect. Once upon a time, God went walking through the garden and said this, be fruitful, have dominion over every creeping thing that creepeth over the earth. Do this, do this, reign, subdue, all of the things God told Adam to do. Do you know the greatest problem with that? You know the most powerful issue with that? Do you know the most profound challenge with that? Adam did not have a body. Do the research. God's instructions to Adam came before Genesis 2-7. He said... Rule, have dominion, be fruitful, multiply. He said that to something with no ears. So when you hear him say that, do I have to play more of the clip? Do I have to play the entire sermon for you to realize how silly and absolutely foolish that is? Anyone who tells you Adam named animals, he lied to you. Adam never named a single animal. 
The Bible says the opposite. It says that when God sent animals to Adam, he watched to see what he would call them, not what he would name them. Uh, so God was measuring the prophetic ability. Yes. So when he says that anyone who says that Adam named the animals is a liar, well, let's see what he says and let's compare that to scripture and let's see who actually is a liar. So all we have to do is go to the scriptures and test and see if that's true. So in Genesis chapter 2, Verse, starting in verse 19, out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the sky and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Now, he's going off of this word call as though it's in this prophetic sense that he has to call these animals to be something that maybe they, they're not or maybe they will not be. But that's not what this is saying. Let's continue. He says, and whatever the man called the living creature, that's what that was its name. And the word for name in the Hebrew is the word shame. And so the man gave, here it is, verse 20, the man gave names to all the animals and to the birds of the sky and to every beast. But for Adam, there was not found a, a suitable helper for him. So clearly, if we say what the scripture says, he says that anyone who says that is a liar. No, I'm not a liar. The Bible's not a liar, but he's a liar. Why is he saying these things? Maybe it's like what P.T. Barnum said, or it's a credit to be said to him, that there's a sucker born every minute. And so he's playing, he's banking that in this room, seems to be banking right, there's a, there's a room full of suckers, in a sense, y'all forgive me for the language, but there's a room full of people who are just foolish, who are biblically illiterate and ignorant, and don't want to open the scriptures for themselves. Why? Because they want to hear something. They want to be moved by something, even if it's not true. Now, where he's saying this at makes sense. He's saying this at New Birth Church in Atlanta. This is a church that was formerly pastored by Bishop Eddie Long. Long story about him. But now it's being pastored, pastored by Jamal Bryant, who also is a heretic, who also is as false as they come and is not ashamed in that. He is a person who is friendly with the world in more ways than we can imagine. But when he makes this statement and then people come back and say, Corey, play the whole clip. No, you don't have to play the entire clip. One, I can't play the whole clip. But two, he says enough here. Jesus at 30 accepted his ministry. Bishop Ellis at 30, Jesus accepted his call to ministry at 30. He had been in carpentry since he was 13. He ran the family business since he was 17. At the risk of being heretical tonight, might I suggest to you that 85% um, of Jesus' life, he was out of order. Eighty-five percent of his life, he was doing what he was not called to do. God, y'all done got quiet. For eighty-five percent of his life, he was not flowing in his God-given function. Eighty-five percent of his life, he is doing what his natural father wanted. But it did not line up with his divine DNA. So when he says that Jesus was out of order for 85% of his life, does he not realize that the Bible tells us Jesus knew exactly who he was and his mission? All we have to do is go to Luke chapter two, verse 49. When they were looking for Jesus, who was gone missing, they thought Jesus was where he was supposed to be. He says in verse 49, when they asked him, he says, why are you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's house or some version might say my father's business or my father's affair? Even at a young age, Jesus knew exactly what he was supposed to do, why he was there and that he was going to be doing it. But Jamal Adams would tell us that 85% of his life, he was out of order. He had to come to this realization. We're talking about Jesus, who is God in flesh. He is God. He's the creator of everything, including even of this ignorant pastor who is clearly unlearning the scriptures, or maybe he does know the scriptures, but he's just simply twisting them to make a point. Either way, both of those are, both ways are not allowed for a pastor. He's preaching a heresy, whether unintentional or intentional. 
clearly Jesus knows what he was supposed to be doing. Now, who's out of order? Well, it's certainly not him. It's certainly not Jesus. I, I would venture to say that it is Jamal Bryant. This is the same Jamal Bryant who believes that we need a new gospel to appease the people who don't want to hear the gospel. So the stuff that was applicable for your grandmother means nothing to you. Uh, and so I said, I had a Zoom with all of my singles just this week, is that for me to tell 16-year-olds to be celibate is one thing. A 37-year-old who's used to getting some, I need a different kind of gospel. Yeah. So the church ain't telling me nothing about sex toys. They ain't saying nothing about the church telling me to be celibate, but my gynecologist is saying something got to happen down there because your stuff's shutting down. Yeah. So we got to have real gospel for grown-ups. I'm about to go to, I'm about to, go to Newburgh. <laughs> I'm going to Newburgh on Sunday. <laughs> the church is not relatable yeah. uh, to our generation and down. So his belief is that the church is not relatable and that we've got to have a new gospel, in essence, for people who are struggling with it. No, we don't. The one we have is just fine. Thank you very much. What the Bible teaches covers all of these things, but he's got to figure out a way, one, to get more people in, but also to be more like the world. Does he not know the Bible says being friends with the world is being an enemy with God? He doesn't care. He'd rather seek ways to maybe grow marijuana on his church property. He'd like to seek ways to bring more people in. Not that they would change. We know that he didn't want them to change because he's the same pastor who's promoting abortion from the pulpit, but someone will say, leave him alone, or they'll say, not you should play him in context, but maybe don't judge him. Let God deal with him. No, that's not true at all. Again, just like police are assigned to make sure that they deal with criminals, they do not let the criminal go because you know what? We've caught enough criminals for the week. No, if a crime is being committed, then what's their job? Well, their job is the same as ours. When we see heresy, when we see danger, when we see wolves coming, we are to warn the flock. We teach the word of God. We evangelize. We share the gospel. At the same time, if we see something like this, we call it out. We can do all those things at once. You know why? Because we've been empowered by the Holy Spirit to do just that. And we've been commanded by scriptures to do just that. Ephesians 5.11 says, don't, not only don't take parts in these unfruitful deeds of darkness, but also to expose them. Expose them. Doesn't sound like a good thing. Doesn't feel good, but it's necessary. Why? To save people. But we want people to be special in our lives because we want to see something special. And because we not, we may not feel that we're that special or we want to be trained how to be that special, we'll go to someone else to teach us how to be special, even though their special is fraudulent. So when you hear someone say or do something that apparently Jesus, the Spirit of God, could not do, people will still rush to defend this person. Be free and never return inside of him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Is he your brother? Yes. He's free forever. Well, the Bible is clear about if you have the spirit of God in you. He says, whom the son sets free, you will be free indeed. That means, by the way, if you're free, you are free in Jesus' name. Some people say, well, he said he used Jesus' name. Well, wait a minute. How did the person get saved in the first place? In Jesus' name. And if they're saved in Jesus' name, and by the way, it's not a magical word to say just by using the words in Jesus' Jesus name but that doesn't know it's the power the authority well I'm saved by that very same power and authority and you mean to tell me that I'm not free indeed even though the scriptures say so I'm not free indeed until someone comes and says I'm free till someone does what God could not do because he says you are free forever wait a minute so I place my faith in Christ the Holy Spirit comes in me to deliver me and I'm not delivered forever I'm not free forever but someone has to come and see an unclean spirit in me, even though it can't be. But I don't know because I'm not reading my scriptures. And someone comes and touches their hand on me and tells me that I'm free forever than now that I am. When you people defend this, you have demonstrated whose side you are on. If you find yourself in the position of wanting to defend them against clear and obvious contradictory statements that go against the Bible, if you find yourself wanting to defend someone and someone points out that they're wrong, if you can at least bring yourself to say they're wrong, well, then we're not focused on them. The problem is you. And I pray that you see that. If you are one of these that no matter what your favorite preacher, favorite apostle, favorite prophet, 
favorite whomever, favorite bishop, if you can't bring yourself to see that they have the ability, the, the possibility of them being wrong exists, well, then you are idolizing them. And if you're idolizing them, it's hard to imagine that you ever had been saved to begin with. It's hard to imagine that you got this idol here, even if you're not aware of it. You've got this idol here that you place above God, and we know that you place them above God because you place them in what they do and say above God's word. If you place anything above God's word, you cannot, let me say this clearly, you cannot be one of his. His sheep, listen to him. His sheep, follow him. In John, in John 10, 5, he says, a stranger, speaking of the sheep, they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the stranger's voice. In other words, he tells us what sheep will do. We'll hear and we will follow. But then he also says a stranger's voice or a strange voice, a voice that contradicts or goes against his voice, they will not follow. If you are following this strange voice, if you are following someone that teaches clearly what the scriptures don't teach or against them, then it's clear, at least at this moment, for the time being, you are not his. Is that a permanent condition? It doesn't have to be. All you simply have to do is place your faith in him and you follow his word, the word that he left for us to follow. Well, then you can be his sheep. And so while there is a warning for them who do such things, who try to use you and treat you as merchandise for their gain, the warning also goes out to all of us who might want to listen to that. There is nobody, I don't care if he's a sound preacher or someone who's a heretic. And by the way, by the way, people who bring heresy do not come with a sign saying, I'm a heretic, I'm bringing false teaching. No, what they're going to do is they're going to say some good words first, then they're going to bring some bad words in a way that it might be confusing or even seducing. And so the warning is also for you. If you are his sheep, I pray that you are, follow his word and do not make excuses for those who don't. Amen.